Joel Tillinghurst manages a mutual fund worth over $70 billion and has a reputation as one of the world's best mutual fund managers. Since 1989, when his Fidelity Low Price Stock Fund launched, investors have enjoyed an annualised return of about 13%. That smashes the 9% average annual return of the fund's benchmark, the Russell 2000, and is well ahead of the S&P 500 index's 10% annualised return over the same period. To make the comparison, if you had invested $1,000 in Tellinghurst low price stock fund on the first day, you would have more than $57,000 today. The same investment in the S&P 500 index fund would be worth about $25,000. Joel's first experience with the stock market was when he was about 10 years old. His mother subscribed to the Value Line Investment Survey, which stimulated his interest in companies and their value. His first stock purchase was buying two shares of Beckman Instruments, which he paid for from money he earned lawn mowing and selling vegetables such as zucchinis and tomatoes. As his father was a biologist and Beckman Instruments did tests and chromatography, you could say that Beckman was within the Tellinghurst family's circle of competence. In the 1980s, Joel drew up a short list of people he wanted to work with. And this list included Peter Lynch, and he subsequently worked for Lynch. Lynch saw Joel's talent early on and provided the foreword to Joel's book, Big Money Think Small. In the foreword, he writes that he continues to be amazed by Joel's ability to consume information and analyse and distill information to find long-term winners while avoiding losers. Peter Lynch has said, in my book, Joel is one of the greatest, most successful stock pickers of all time. He is a shining example of an active manager who has been able to beat the street. Joel outlines that stocks are still the best unit for future returns and wealth. An example of a stock that has been a winner for Joel is Monster Beverage. Joel bought this in 2001 and when adjusted for stock splits, the price that he paid was around four cents a share. It's now $57 a share after a recent stock split. Joel says, I bought Monster Beverage. At the time they were Hanson's Natural and were a juice drink company because I liked that they were trying an energy drink. I like companies that try a lot of experiments. They may not always work, but they try a lot of things. And I think that Monster is very innovative in that way. Another winner was Ansys, which like Monster Beverage was also bought in 2001. Adjusting for stock splits, they traded for less than $3 a share. Now they are over $300 a share. Ansys specialises in software that shows how the laws of physics act on products such as airplane wings. In other words, Joel seeks out companies that can expand their businesses without being usurped by rival technologies. The principles Joel uses to assess stocks are Number one, don't pay too much. Two, don't invest in businesses which are prone to obsolescence and destruction. Three, don't invest with crooks and idiots. Four, don't invest in what you don't know. And five, stay away from your own craziness. These principles are then aligned to a four part checklist to make sure that he's not paying too much for a company. This checklist includes, does the stock have a low PE ratio or high earnings yield? Does the company do something unique to earn super profits, therefore has a moat? And is the company built to last, therefore protected from competitors, fads and debt? And lastly, are the finances stable into the future or are they cyclical? In 2011, Joel had a life-changing experience in Japan when the Fukushima earthquake struck. 
This was a reminder that life is short and unexpected. This experience propelled Joel to write his book, Big Money Think Small. He describes the book as an authentic book full of good stories and hard-earned wisdom. Investing is often described as simple but not easy. All investors make mistakes and Joel outlines that you need to be gentle and forgiving on yourself. If you would have made a different decision, learn from it. He also outlines that it is important to avoid get-rich-quick schemes, gimmicks and fads. When it comes to these get-rich-quick schemes, gimmicks or fads, Joel has said, Emotions are all stirred up and people become delusional by narrative talking points. As a result, they lose their ability to reason. Crowds can become attracted to spectacle, image and myths. Ultimately, crowds will chase a delusion until it is destroyed by fact. There have been many financial bubbles throughout history, and many have been described by world-renowned economist John Kenneth Galbraith in his book A Short History of Financial Euphoria. John Kenneth Galbraith highlights that investors often quickly forget the past, therefore we have these cycles of financial bubbles. He says, The first is the extreme brevity of the financial memory. In consequence, financial disaster is quickly forgotten. The South Sea Bubble in 1720 was a scheme to privatise British government debt. The South Sea Company was Britain's trading monopoly with the South Americas, and holders of debt could trade this for South Sea Company stock. The stock price surged, fuelled on hype, and subsequently crashed by 80%. It is reported that Sir Isaac Newton lost a fortune in the bubble and he lamented, I can calculate the movement of stars, but not the madness of men. Many investors are speculators. Investors need to be like Ben Graham saying that when you buy something, you want a security of principle and a reasonable rate of return. Therefore, when assessing a company, understand its competitive advantages, what threats the company has, what is driving growth, and where the business is likely to be in five years' time. By using the investing approach of Joel Tillinghast, we can all become better investors.